Hi there, Mouseketeers. Welcome to the Disneyland Beat, where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. Today, we have 10 money-saving tips for you we think will help when you're planning your next trip to Disneyland. Come on into Disneyland with us. Like, subscribe, and stick around. Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at your pirates, eh? Make the jump to life, speed. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm TC. Orange County, where Disneyland is located, and nearby Los Angeles, are year-round popular destinations for travel and business. But you will save on airfare, gas, tickets, and hotels if you are traveling during what little off-season there is. So avoiding the height of summer and the holidays is a good idea, but also local conventions and events can affect the demand pricing. So we suggest pricing out a couple different date options when you're planning and seeing the difference for your trip. If you're doing a multi-day trip, choosing your dates carefully can save you hundreds of dollars and improve your overall experience as there will be lighter crowds as well as greater reservation availability inside the parks. Long gone are the days where you can just show up to Disneyland, buy a ticket, and head on in. Not only do you need reservations, but Disneyland has moved to a demand pricing system where single-day tickets vary in cost per day based on expected crowds. Single-day tickets cost less on some weekdays, such as some Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and they are the most expensive on weekends, school breaks, and holidays. Each day of the week can be a different price. You can save the most money by buying multi-day tickets, which are not affected by peak pricing, so it doesn't matter when you visit. Christmas, July, or a weekday in September. And we recommend spending at least three days in the park for first-time visitors especially. And luckily, you begin to see the most savings at the three-day or more tickets. Another advantage to a multi-day ticket is that it brings down the cost of parking. Park hopping. Kind of. Adding on park hopping to a ticket costs the same no matter if it's one, two, or a five-day ticket, so with multi-day tickets, it certainly adds value. Yes, we absolutely love staying at the Disneyland Resort hotels, and there are benefits to doing so. I mean, who wouldn't pass up an opportunity to stay at Disney's Grand Californian or the classic Disneyland Hotel? But it just isn't always in the budget. Unlike at Disney World, there are more reasons to stay off-site at Disneyland, and the savings and accessibility are a big factor. For one, there really isn't a budget Disneyland hotel option. The least expensive rooms average $325 to $400 a night. You definitely want to be careful about which off-site hotel you choose, but we have a lot of videos on that topic that you can check out showcasing our favorite nearby hotels. Some off-site hotels provide free breakfast or other meals, helping you save on food costs. And hotels that offer a free shuttle or are within walking distance help save on parking and transportation fees as well. Now, I know many of our listeners like to keep trips to Disneyland as spontaneous as possible, but I gotta say, we always have a general idea of what major spending splurge we're going to do on each trip. Maybe it's lightsabers at Savi's this trip, or the World of Color dessert party the next, but there are lots of high price souvenirs and experiences to choose from, so it can be good to do a little bit of research and make a clear-headed choice, otherwise it's easy to overspend. Another really good tip when shopping is to not buy anything at Disneyland that you could simply get at Walmart or Target. There is a bunch of Unique to the Parks merch that you can't get anywhere else, but there's also a ton of generic Disney t-shirts and hoodies and clothing, as well as toys that you can get much cheaper off-site. Although they're getting hard to find, there are free souvenirs you can get at different attractions and low-cost souvenirs like penny press machines. Check out our video on freebies at Disneyland. Beverages are a major profit point for theme parks and similar venues, so it's good to pick your battles here. For us, we never buy water in the parks. We either bring it in or we avail ourselves of free water at filling stations or at any of the quick service dining locations too. We avoid buying soda. The sugar intake while dining at Disneyland is usually pretty high and doesn't need any help. Plus, it's really overpriced. And it probably goes without saying that alcohol is overpriced as well, but no more than other similar venues. What we really recommend avoiding at Disneyland are buying souvenir glasses. There are beer flights that are available that can cost costs between $35 to $95, and they only come with usually one can's worth of beer. 
$95 is too much to pay for plastic shot glasses. In almost every case, the souvenir glass costs more than the product inside it. I think the most ridiculous one I see is the beverage gauntlet. Early in the day, people walk around celebrating the purchase, and later in the day, you can just see the buyer's remorse in their eyes having to carry it around all day. If you want a souvenir glass, you might try grabbing a beer at the Pim Tasting Lab. You get a free beaker-themed glass with your purchase. Most of the people in our group agrees that Genie Plus is worth the extra cost, especially for out-of-town and occasional visitors. The ability to line hop helps you get more done in a day. But it also gets you free photo pass for the day. There are photographers all over the park that can take professional photos of you and your group, and you get to download photos of some of the rides and meet and greets. Otherwise, we don't recommend getting photo pass and just taking your own pictures as it can cost up to $15 to get one image downloaded. It's pricey and that's equivalent to the price of Genie Plus. If you're looking to save money and keep your young children happy, you might want to pre-purchase some of those impulse items, like mouse ears before you get to the park. Mouse ears can cost $30 or more. Bubble blowers are another thing your kiddos will see and want. And while some get annoyed at the bubbles of Disneyland, we think they just add to the magic. If you've already purchased one, remember to bring it. And if not, hit the dollar store or Amazon and get a magic wand bubble blower and bring it with you to the park. And once night hits, there's gonna be a ray of light up LED necklaces and glow sticks and products the kids and adults are gonna clamor for. When our kid was younger, we would bring cheap light up equivalent toys from the dollar store and save the 25 bucks. As you buy things around the park, you'll notice the magic key holders getting discounts for most of their purchases on Disney property. There's also a Chase Visa card you can get that has a sign up bonus and gets you a 10% discount as well as a reward program that pays back in Disney dollars. Now, of course, we only recommend getting into credit cards of any kind if you're good at managing that type of thing. If you can't stick to a budget, well, then buying stuff at Disney on credit isn't really a good idea. But if you are that person, getting the card for just even one trip, then canceling it can have financial benefits. Another way to budget is to buy gift cards, something you can buy at a small discount with your Chase card or at Sam's Club, by the way. You can preset how much you intend to spend on a trip or get multiple cards for every member in your party. It's a great way for kids to track spending over the course of a trip too. You can bring food into Disneyland, even coolers. You just can't bring an actual ice. We sometimes make sandwiches and bring our own lunch, but we always bring in some snacks. It's nice just having it right when you want it, for one, and the little stuff really adds up at Disneyland. There's some of the most overpriced items. A cookie can run you five to eight dollars, depending on which one you get. Our final tip is that it's okay to use those third-party ticket sites. It's not a huge discount, but it is a discount. And the third-party sites that we've worked with, they are reliable sources for multi-day tickets, and you can usually save a few bucks per day, and every little bit helps. You won't have any trouble linking them to your Disneyland account. The app has a built-in scanner that will use your phone to read the barcode and voila, linked. Well, folks, that's it for us today. We hope you find these tips helpful on your next trip. Thanks for joining the Disneyland Beat, your source for everything Disneyland. See you real soon, Mouseketeers. See you real soon.